Hello everyone. I hope you're all healthy and safe. Welcome to this lecture on how to clone a gene. It is going to be an overview and most importantly, I will try to speak about what genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology can do. I'm aware that most of you know it, but it's a good thing to uh, build the enthusiasm and energy for this course. So um, I will go uh, through it and then we will end up with the overview of the of our course as well. <coughs> uh, so whatever we do should be for the benefit of humankind. Not only humankind, but all the, all the species around too. But as a selfish species, every species is selfish. We tend to uh, first prioritize ourselves, and I think we shouldn't. It shouldn't be at the cost of other species. We have uh, there is we are already uh, there are many species that are already endangered. So <clears throat> the problem is that there are so many problems because of the activities of mankind for the mankind and also everybody else. And so there is a need for generation of large quantities of food. Uh, and then trying to minimize the effects of diseases and better our environment and also try to provide other energy sources and in all these cases genetic engineering is uh, is an essential part if you take the course biotechnology uh, or bioengineering too you remove the um, molecular biology or genetic engineering it will be anything else other than biotechnology it is about the ability to manipulate at the genome level directly or indirectly and that's why it forms an essential part in uh, of biotechnology so we will quickly see is uh, what is genetic engineering and what it can do and then we will um, go further down um, we have already discussed this. There are so many problems that the human race or the this earth is having with food, water, space and health. And our concern is the uh, health that we need to address these problems. That is genetic disorders, pathogen associated disorders, that is infectious diseases and also uh, other uh, emergence of new diseases too. <coughs> So our immediate goals are to address, uh, to increase the uh, quality and quantity of food, uh, to provide um, healthcare issues that are such as these uh, gene therapies, regenerative medicine, antibiotics, vac vaccines, and so on, and also for environment um, <clears throat> to be able to reduce further uh, population. Sorry, further pollution. So in medicine, because our this course is oriented towards the applications in medicine, we need to have uh, certain things in mind that we can approach any of these disease, any of these categories in diagnosis to be able to predict or to be able to try uh, see if the disease is already there or not, and how um, and the treatment opportunities or repair opportunities if the limbs are lost for example or regenerative cap uh, capacities in any of these what we should keep in mind as an uh, as a student or an engineer is the efficiency should be high the large scale you should have be able to produce in large scale so that uh, it is uh, available to most people and it should, it should be of high quality, it should be economical <clears throat> and there shouldn't be any side effects and it should be able to uh, be amenable to uh, further uh, progress and uh, production. You take the case of COVID <clears throat> and I will just take it uh, something about the diagnosis. We are having uh, rapid kits for it. Okay. I'm trying to explain not the principle of it <clears throat> but I'm trying to explain in terms of these categories efficiency large scale and so on uh, the rapid kit it's produced in large scale by China and some other countries I think Indian companies are also there probably and they are produced in large scale but there is still short supply 
and uh, it is relatively um, economical compared to rt pcr based uh, diagnosis it is fast but the problem is it is not good quality the quality is not good in the sense a person that is positive actually may be getting uh, a, may be given a negative result i hope you see the diff problem with this a, an individual that is positive if he gets or he or she gets a negative result and then this this guy keeps walking around freely and then infecting many other people uh, if a negative person gets positive there is little risk there is risk this person may be put in quarantine along with other people who may have but as long as they are asymptomatic asymptomatic that is all right but if a positive person has been given a negative result that is they say okay you are covid negative but the guy uh, has some symptoms or so and he goes on traveling very freely with and mixing up with other people not following the rules that the government has stipulated then the person is actually infecting more number of people i hope you see the problem with this rapid kit is economical and there are large number and easy to produce easy to test and so on but the uh, the accuracy is missing and that might actually complicate the issues than other um, than the other um, say something like rt pcr based methods okay and why in the 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 raw material for genetic engineering is the genes or the genetic elements and why we are choosing genetic elements is life is the best representation of engineering possible not that it is very smart or so but uh, but because it has taken and tested each step of it over millions of years it has generated so many strategies and um, uh, repertoire that can be used by us now what might have taken millions of years we can probably generate it in 10 10 years or so i mean modifications okay so they uh, they have a structure uh, and then they some of the genes are structural some of them have a function like uh, uh, like enzymes enzymes and so on some of them are regulatory and so on so we can take several of these mix them up and that is the engineering point of it why are you choosing a particular gene or a genetic element how do you propose to mix them up what combinations do you want to make and how are you going to express it how much are you going to express it that is the engineering part in um genetic engineering you are engineering a genetic uh, element by combining or recombining several of these genetic elements to achieve the a beneficial goal so uh, you are all aware of uh, uh, the central dogma that is dna through transcriptions give rise gives rise to rna and rna gives rise to proteins through the process of translation and what we have to be as uh, i have already uploaded an assignment the essence or the objective of the assignment is to make it educational in the sense that you you have you all have read molecular biology some time ago and it's an essential thing that you already read through these again revise and get better out of it and uh, we are trying to alter the genetic makeup of an organism or an or an or an propagating entity like a, a virus or a plasmid to achieve some goals okay so we should know uh, each of these steps that are there in the uh, central dogma that is replication transcription translation and so on so the whole course will be uh, in this uh, in it can be put it into one of this uh, graph like this and then excuse me sorry about that <clears throat> so 
what we will do is uh, in genetic engineering or recombinant dna technology is that we are making a recombinant dna what is recombinant dna if you see the if you see watson book i think uh, for homologous recombination or so the chapter it starts with all dna is recombinant dna is to say that dna is a very stable molecule but then it keeps mixing when you have two different dna molecules like this say for example this is one and this is the other one when you have a mixture of these two and they form like this that is recombinant dna there are different ways homologous recombination is also there site specific recombination some they are very they represent in general some types of recombination that is combining two dna molecules with two different genetic information that's the important part of it it's not about the physical nature of the dna say for example if there is a sequence a and uh, and then you have b here is a and b there is a difference between the product molecule compared to that of this piece of dna or this piece of dna now it the product is ab it's not a or it's not just b okay so every time you combine two dna molecules you have a new or modified genetic information and that is what is uh, recombinant dna okay uh, you should also keep in mind i think our dna some people might use it for uh, the genes that are coding for ribosomal rrna okay uh, but then our dna you try to you mean that it is for in application science uh, applied science it is recombinant dna dna okay so we will have dna cleavage production of uh, rna in this case we will first have isolation of gene and then we will pick up a suitable uh, vector and those are plasmids cosmids and so on that i have already discussed and then we will have we'll put it into the cell why should we put it into the cell all propagation that is propagation in the sense all replication is almost always uh, cell dependent that means cytoplasm dependent or within the cell um in nature you would not find replication happening anywhere else so it's always within the cell be it replication of the genomic dna or a plasmid or a viroid or anything it's always within the cell so it becomes imperative that we have we should introduce it into the cell you can argue that by pcr you can probably gen, uh, amplify it you can amplify it but uh, there are some techniques where you can amplify the whole plasmid provided the plasmid is, is small okay but in all of nature you would find uh, replication only happening within the cells so we we should we can that's easier and economical and it is better too because there is proofreading activity in pcr the proofreading activity is very less or actually you should choose something uh, we will come to we will probably discuss somewhere else uh, speed is inversely proportional to fidelity that works out. just note this down we will discuss some other time so and then uh, we are that is by putting into cell we can clone it or we can also sometimes express uh, the gene and then get the product that we are looking at so we'll have so many uh, techniques that we will learn pcr construction of genomic libraries and cdna libraries you all have you some of you might have already learned it but we will see it at a different and higher level and that uh, that is what i want you to keep in mind in all of these cases in each of these uh, steps is a technique okay the whole cloning process is a huge process each step has some pr several uh, protocols and several techniques are available and tools are available how you go about it as an engineer we got to think about the the problem what are we what is the objective of what we are trying to do and then we should have gained enough background knowledge of the uh, problem whether um, how is it regulated what kind of gene it is what is its protein sequence how does it uh, function 
those kinds of and the expression for example you should also know about it uh, when you say knowledge of the problem it also uh, requires the knowledge of the protocol that you are making the host cell what kind of vector did you have all those stuff and there should always be precautions and there are also uh, you should also be aware of what outcomes uh, are likely and what may not be achievable at this stage and there is always a better step and there is always a way of uh, where we can do it better and that's where uh, we keep, we need to identify how it can be bettered okay or what all that needs to be better here are some examples quickly i will go through you must have seen these already but let's see it here are two uh, mice uh, one the one that, that is the bigger one is having a uh, a gene inserted into its genome for human growth hormone because of this the human growth hormone it it is produced in little bit excess because it now has this additional gene because of which the mouse uh, um, uh, grows larger than its uh, a peer okay just because you added a gene you can see the increase in the size of it similarly here is a nice example of uh, for flower flask where you know that uh, ethylene is there that is a hormone Uh, that is responsible for ripening of fruits and so on so because of this the flowers usually last maybe 2 days or so at the most but if you the, there is a, a, a gene that encodes a protein that binds to ethylene because of which there are several uh, ca- there's a cascade of events that happens and ripening happens and therefore the shelf life of these flowers is very less So what some people have done is they have uh, made that particular gene insensitive to ethylene because of which the flower which was lasting somewhere around 2 days or so can now last for 3 uh, weeks that's a that's a huge improvement in uh, in the shelf life of those flowers imagine the same things can be done if it can be done to fruits and other things uh, you can increase the way uh, the food spoilage can be prevented uh, there is another one regarding uh, food wastage because of the pest control uh, there are uh, some beetles they the pests they they feed on uh, these pulses and because they have made a they had an enzyme inhibitor encoded they put an into the plant they put an enzyme inhibitor if the beet uh, insect eats it it creates inhibition and distaste and uh, problems to the beetle because of which they they prevent or they avoid eating these ones but they keep eating these and this is these are the the top ones are the ones that are uh, uh, the non normal ones the bottom ones are the recombinant ones where which provides an which produces an enzyme inhibitor that affects the uh, the fly Here is a uh, picture of uh, plants and if you can see these are these are the uh, control and uh, these are the ones that are modified glyphosate is a herbicide that can be used uh, that can be that is kind of toxic to majority of the plants so what they did is to the plant or the domestic plant that we need they made them glyphosate resistant these are resistant to glyphosate whereas every majority of the herb herbs or so that grow or weeds they are all glyphosate resist uh, sorry sensitive so when you go into a field of what we have uh, planted and we just uh, spray glyphosate these weeds they will die out whereas the recombinant plants because of the engineered plants because they are made glyphosate resistant they grow and that is what is the basis of uh, the of roundup here is super salmon it's a fish that is the natural one is this and this is the engineered one 
the engineered one is uh, more than 10 times or 20 times the size of the natural ones again it is because of the uh, the recombinant growth hormone that is introduced into the genome of the fish and the idea here is in all the cases that we have seen there is a importance of what we are trying to do to increase the food supply of humans the quality a quantity of the food supply here is something that uh, is uh, increases the quality of food uh, that is here is a, a bull or the cow uh, that has been bull has been engineered with a uh, gene for human lactoferrin uh, that is it allows the uh, iron uptake and uh, a retaining of iron in humans so if there are people who are uh, I, the iron deficiency can be reduced just by drinking the milk of the progeny of this bull because if this progeny have inherited the uh, inherited the gene then they would produce the cows uh, the calves then they grow the cow as a cow would produce milk that must be having lactoferrin in it which has antibacterial and uh, iron transport properties so that is how you can increase the um, uh, quality of the food not just the quantity here is transgenic rice it's i think it's also called as golden rice because you can see the normal rice is something like this and the golden rice is almost uh, yellowish tinge to it it has been modified by introducing uh, several of the several elements from different uh, genes uh, different organisms like uh, beans and uh, aspergillus and so on so one is about ferritin uh, the pro increases the iron content in the food. They, they got this from the beans, and there is another one from Aspergillus. Uh, uh, it's a fungi, fungus. They have used phytate, uh, the phytase, which destroys the uh, uh, chemical phytate, which inhibits the reabsorption of iron by the body. Similarly, you have many other things. I think the color comes because of the beta carotene, which is a precursor of vitamin A. And that's why uh, it is also referred to as golden rice. Now we will have two examples of, uh, quick examples of what uh, genetic engineering can do for, um, on the medical side. I, I guess you all know about diabetes and the at least the type 1 diabetes is due to um, insufficient production of insulin by the body and because of which the skeletal muscle cells and liver they fail to take up the glucose because of which uh, the blood glucose is remains high and that's detrimental to many other tissues in the body so the one way is to produce uh, insulin from external uh, to acquire insulin from the outside and then inject into the body insulin shots previously uh, people have tried uh, getting insulin from pig so they went to they used to go to pig, pig slaughterhouses collect a lot of pancreas from there you call you you kill a thousand pigs to get pork or so and then from all of them you might get very little bit of insulin which might be insufficient for a person alone now we have insulin produced recombinant insulin produced uh, using bacteria and it is uh, very now they, you can produce in a very large quantity and it's also cheaper um, so what you do is I mean what we are discussing about insulin now is just an overview okay the actual uh, things we will have to read about what kind of protein I guess you know that it consists of two chains and so in a way although it is produced as a single polypeptide by the time insulin is completely processed it is uh, it has two chains bound by disulfide bonds meaning it's almost like having a quaternary structure so to produce a protein like that is not straightforward as shown in this picture but it is good for illustration of how we see it so you can have the uh, uh, gene take out the gene of it and then put it into a vector such as this a plasmid like this and then now you have a recombinant DNA and then you put that into the cells 
and you grow the cells and from the cells you will take out uh, you will see individually which of these uh, is actually producing good amount of uh, insulin and then you uh, you screen those and then you start producing insulin okay that's just an overview here is about uh, vaccines uh, again as i said this is also going to be an overview is recombinant vaccines so covid for example i will just try to take it as covid uh, if one wants to produce insulin for it you one has to go for recombinant dna vaccine you take a, a you want to raise antibodies against this uh, this uh, the top capsid protein that you are seeing here for example right you want to generate antibodies against it that means you should have a large quantity of that protein in the body you should have injected into the human body so that the immune system will generate antibodies against that but so you cannot uh, if you want to produce that particular protein in large quantities you need the gene for it uh, so you you isolate the gene i mean you you amplify uh, or restriction digestion and amplification or so and then you uh, make a recombinant dna with a vector like this that is the recombinant dna and then uh, you put it into a cell and then grow the uh, in the bacteria for example and make this peptide in large quantities and that can be given as a peptide in another ways that is shown here this is a subunit vaccine where you you put it you make this here is herpes simplex virus and you want to make antibodies against it so uh, you take a harmless uh, copax virus or so and then you take the gene that is uh, that you want to raise antibody against and put it into the genome of the harm, harmless um, uh, virus and then introduce into the virus and infect the body with the virus itself so there you you are not just giving the protein you are giving the whole uh, viral particles but the viral particle by itself is not harmful okay so there are strategies again when we are going to, uh, that we are we will discuss in depth um here is one thing um, with stem cell um, engineered stem cell therapy or it is mostly on the line of gene therapy as we are going progressing in this course we will also at some points want should have to learn about stem cells and um, we will see how how we will get through it um, but if you want it at one point after i have accumulated enough videos on the stem cell biology course i'll give you access to that you can go and watch a few to refresh yourselves about it so stem cell um, if you want to repair a person here here is a person that uh, has some deficiency and you want to repair it then you should have uh, been able to get stem cells of that person embryonic stem cells that's not possible it you cannot already have a patient and then already have an embryo too that's not possible so there are several ways of um, induced pluripotent stem cells and so on the technologies keep on going each of these steps is a uh, serious protocol that we have to with a lot of intricate steps we will we will read this but what i want you to know is there are ex vivo gene therapy and in vivo gene therapy technologies where these are under, under development where they are planning they are trying to repair a person's tissues so that the person can lead a normal life the deficiency is being corrected okay um at this point of time i think this is already little late probably for uh, others there are several diseases that people are working or they are in the clinical trials for the gene therapy um including um uh, skid cystic fibrosis some of the ones that i know of uh, is rheumatoid arthritis some people are looking at Hem hemophilia is also being looked at aids as well but what you what i want you to gain from this is that 
it is highly possible and for regenerative medicine we need to put in a lot more efforts and we need a lot more technical manpower intellectual and technical manpower to go into uh, and explore the possibilities in all these cases so that we will be able to achieve the goals of regenerative medicine i hope you have seen this picture uh, there is also glow fish these plants and cats and these are transgenic animals or organisms where you introduce the gene from another one and here i think these are all uh, introduced with uh, gfp or yfp uh, green fluorescent protein or yellow fluorescent protein you have to expose with camera for a long time i guess to get this in the dark because you have introduced gfp they might glow in the in the dark and they look beautiful but this is playing around okay so in the last one um what i want you to understand is that this course is going to be full of uh, problem solving we will have problems interpretation of data and so on so i hope uh, you will be uh, you can solve this puzzle for the time being you can pause it here and uh, solve it faster okay and if you are uh, if you i i might have already told you if not i will tell it again you have to play mind sweeper there is a nice game that i would want you to play that improves your uh, reasoning skills it's not just about clearing the minds in it you should clear it very fast how fast you can do is one of the aspects of it okay thank you very much um we'll see you again have lots of fun and stay safe bye